Okay. We're recording. How exciting. Um, hi, Jamie. Hi. This is my first time recording our little Zoom composed conversations. <laughs> I have to come up with like a catchy little title that works in the word composed, I guess. Uh, but why, first of all, thank you for taking the time to chat with me. And then maybe do you just want to introduce yourself? So everybody- Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. I'm glad that I get to just spend some time talking to you and dole out a little of uh, Corona time this way. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm a therapist. I am, I see mostly women who work hard to live intentionally and um, struggle with the difficult parts of wanting to have it all. Um, And those things are like anxiety and perfectionism and uh, shame, which ends up showing up like never being, feeling like you're good enough. Um, And then I run groups, women's groups. I run motherhood and identity groups and entrepreneurial women's groups, which are, my Where the personal meets the professional and how I know you. Uh, yes, I love that group. I think that's been such a lifeline. I mean, even now in the quarantine, maybe especially now in the quarantine, but just met so many cool mamas yeah. through your groups. Uh, so with May being Mental Health Awareness Month, which, you know, I, that plays a you know a role in my life I struggled a lot with depression and anxiety mm-hmm. as a teenager and a young adult and you know you're a therapist and I yeah. thought we could chat about um you know loosely how mental health is related to sort of like organization but I think more specifically uh, like for me, I know that my home plays such a significant role in supporting my overall well-being. And so I'm pretty fierce about like protecting my space and making sure that the energy is right for me to feel good. I feel like that is my baseline of what I need to be able to like wake up and feel healthy so that I can go out and do all of like the other healthy things that also support my mental health, like exercise and meditate and all of that. Uh, But I struggle to get the motivation to do those things if my physical space around me isn't how I want it to be, or it feels really chaotic. Uh, Your home is gorgeous. Like when you walk in, it just feels so soothing and so uh, like safe. If there's like a, that feels like a weird word to use for somebody else's house. It doesn't, and that, it, you know, that's really, a nice compliment because we really did um, want to create a place that felt that way for people. Yeah. And for ourselves. What was, so that's cool. It was like an intentional choice on your part when you were designing like the space itself or like, how do you, cause you're, I mean, I wouldn't say you're like minimalist. Your house is very warm and inviting. Uh but it feels very intentional, like everything that's in your space. Um, it was all incredibly intentional, which is maybe annoying in its own right. But my husband and I looked for a long time for the right house. And we looked for over a year um, because there were certain things that needed to be like, I really wanted it to flow well and to have great light. But most importantly, I really wanted it to be the kind of place where like it would be a Thanksgiving house, a house that was easy for people to all come together in. Yeah. And I just really wanted to create a place where like that was everybody's home base. That we could invite everybody here and people could come in and out as they wanted to, knowing that this was always going to be a place like for us to be together, um, whether it be friends or family. And at that time, I wasn't intending on hosting groups at my house even though that ended up making a lot of sense to do. So it was hard to find a house that was really set up for, for all of that. Um, And uh, so we looked for a long time and then when we found it, we did some construction, but before we even started the construction, I had a feng shui person come over and um, 
make a plan for the house. And, you know, the person that I had is Catherine Shepard's mother, Peggy oh. Hansen. And um, she's such a gift. And she really does the feng shui in a way that makes sense to our Western minds. You know, that maybe isn't about like, a, a home that presents like with Chinese decor, but like things that make sense for our homes and our lives that honor the feng shui and the different elements and yeah. the balancing. And so, um, Mama Peggy is what I call her. Uh, is that Mama what she does for a living or she just did it because you're such close friends? No, I mean, I paid her. She doesn't do it for a living. Peggy has so many um, amazing talents and skills. You know, like she's an amazing quilter and wow. like she just does cool stuff and knows a lot about things. But, and one of the things that she knows a lot about is feng shui. Okay. So she made me like a really beautiful report and it's how I made all of my decisions. That was like the first basis of how I made my decisions for like what each room would feel like. And the rooms all are cohesive and flow together, you know, like as a whole home. But, um, it definitely informed like what colors or what shapes I brought out for each room. Hmm. And how like, so, I mean, obviously like you feel good in your space. You should. I do. Yeah. It feels like a little sanctuary to me. Do you feel like your husband picks up on that too? Like, is he as conscious of like how the environment supports his moods or he just lives in the house and is like happy about it? Um, he didn't have as much, um, say in how we, what we put into the house, you know, like he really trusted me to, to make it what it is. Um, but he really does appreciate and feel the benefit of it. So, you know, like he would choose between things, but he wasn't like a part of like the whole design situation. I feel like that's how Chad would be too. Yeah. That's my favorite way, by the way. That way. <laughs> when husbands are like, no, I don't want that kind of artwork. I just am like. Yeah. You're like, oh, I shouldn't have asked you. Yeah. I'm like, well, okay, well, that's going to be what I want. So. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> so bratty. Um, and I can't stop asking him his opinion. I, I don't want to hear it ever. It's all <laughs> the exact opposite of the thing I actually want. You just want his help to get you to what your opinion is. Yes. Yeah. And it seems that it's always the opposite of whatever his opinion was. Yeah. Um, and I just He's just there to provide clarity for you. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> or or um, to agree with the amazing choices that you've made and to compliment you on them. Oh, yeah. Uh, now I've lost my, I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> like envisioning all the times when Chad's opinion has been wrong about <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but we were talking about the feng shui and how Matt felt about it. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I feel like, you know, that's, it's so interesting to me because I don't think that, you know, like at least in our relationship, like Chad wouldn't walk into a space and say, it makes me feel this way. Mm -hmm. he, it's more like linear, like just, I like this house or I don't like this house. Uh which is the exact opposite of how I look at everything where it's like, I want to make sure that like the energy feels really good. <laughs> like you're just paying attention to so much more of that stuff. Uh, but it does really have an impact on his overall sort of like level of happiness and functionality too. He's just like not paying attention to it, which I think is maybe how like a majority of the world is like, we just live in our spaces without really thinking about how they're impacting us. Totally. I think it affects just about all of us. And I, I think that people are aware of how much it affects them to different degrees. Yeah. Uh, well, I would love to pick your brain a little bit about, uh, you know, if you have like tips on over like maintaining a sort of like baseline level of mental health if that's even like a thing that exists just you know with it being mental health awareness month and i'd love to be able to share outside of like how maintaining a really streamlined home supports you if there's like other rituals or things that you 
have found that are helpful. Um, let's see. So as it relates to the home and the space? Or anything. Right. Like for me, you know, like I can't, the, my very first thing that needs to be done is my home needs to be in order. But then, you know, like I usually start every day with a meditation, like something that's going to kind of eliminate any like lingering anxiety or anything that I have starting the day and just get me more in like a grounded place. Yeah. Do you do that while you're in bed? Do you go get coffee first? Um, my favorite is getting out of bed. I would like to wake up before Chad does, which is hard because he's a morning person and I'm not. Uh, so I'll leave the room and make a coffee and sit in my office with a coffee and put on a meditation. Okay. That's nice. Uh, yeah, it is nice. But it's like, you know, just one of those things that I think now I've done it so many times that I feel very different if I don't make the time in the space to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, and like so much of, I think my own personal mental health journey has been just figuring out like what those things are that help me feel really good and making sure that I prioritize those things. Uh, which is funny cause I get like really fierce about them. Like I'm pretty fierce about making sure our house stays organized. And it doesn't always come across as like, I need that so that I have like lowered anxiety and lower stress levels so that mm. I can be a better mom and a better wife and like better at everything. It usually just comes across as like, I'm nagging my family to put their shit away. Yeah. Uh, but when I look at it, like that's why it's so important to me. And the same with like, you know, I think it started there for me because that was the easiest thing for me to grasp. Uh, and especially like when it comes to organizing, you get that like small sense of control over, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is that you're doing, which was helpful. And I feel like that's kind of the small amount of energy that gives me the energy to keep doing the other. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. What do you like? Do you have a routine that just keeps you kind of feeling like that's what you need in order to? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it feels like everybody would need tidiness and organization to some extent for their mental health. Um, I don't necessarily think that it's true for everybody, though. Um, but it definitely is for me. And that means, like, my bed has to be made every day. Mm -hmm. Like, so that's a good one. Um, and like I can't start in my office unless everything is put away and like reset you know like it has to be and um <clears throat> and the kitchen too so yeah like I definitely think that all of those things are really important but when you're feeling out of control or anxious I think that tending to your physical space is a really easy way to reset and um and get the momentum moving in a different direction. Um, also doing sage or some sort of um, oil diffuser, like that is magical to me. Sage. Um, it's an effort, it takes a lot of time, but I think opening up all of the windows and being thorough and, um, and meticulous in how you do it, it's just, I don't know. Like there's something like fundamentally changing. It feels like on a cellular level to me. Yeah. Um, that to me is like when my house feels truly clean. Yeah. It's like the windows have been open. There's new fresh air coming in. I've saged everything. I love when you sage and then I'll go through and Palo Santo after everything. <laughs> oh yeah. That's um, like an extra credit right there. I don't think I've done that. Oh my God. It's so, I just, I love the, I mean, I love the smell of both of them, but the sweetness of the Palo Santo is so nice. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's supposed to like lock in the good energy after the sage has cleansed. Yeah. After bad. Uh, I forgot about that. That's like an almost daily ritual that I have now too, or sort of like a go-to if I just feel, um, I don't know what that like emotion is, but sometimes where you're like neither happy nor sad, like you yeah. just kind of like, ugh. 
uh, that's always the first thing that I'll grab. And then yeah. I like, <laughs> my kids think I'm nuts, I'm sure. I like open their door and like stick the sage bundle in. Yeah. <laughs> pull it back. <laughs> But you know, they're gonna remember that so fondly. Like they're they're gonna at some point smell that and have really strong memories of of being a kid. Oh, I love that. Uh, I can just picture them as little nuts <laughs> in their house. <laughs> yeah, but it is it is a funny ritual. Um But it, I mean it's nice and it's uh I think it just brings it back to like the intentionality too and like deliberately choosing to do something that's going to make you feel better, whether there's like a science behind it or not. Uh, yeah, I like that one. That's a good one. Um, having lots of plants, I think, is hugely grounding and feels like life and connection to nature which I think is another way like your, your physical surroundings really affect your mental health and just how you're feeling as a default. Um, so I think having a lot of plants around is really important. What you got, girl? You got your green? Yeah, my, little, my mom's Sarah. Uh, yeah, totally. Plants, fresh flowers. Yeah. Um, those I think are just like the fastest. Anytime someone asks me like, what's something I could do in 10 minutes to make my house feel better? I'm like, throw that shit in a closet, like where no one's going to see it and put out some fresh locks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, or light a candle. You know, get some good mood lighting, light a candle, fresh flowers, and you're done. You know, plants have the added benefit of having to tend to something outside of yourself which is a really impactful way to diminish anxiety. Um, having to care for something else or show up for something else, pay attention to the well-being of something else aside yeah. from yourself is a really important way to ground. Um, and that goes into obviously not just plants, but doing good things for other people and um, finding a way to contribute to the greater good being thoughtful, paying something forward. Um, those things are like an immediate game changer in interrupting anxiety and depression. That's so nice. I love that. Uh, you're totally right. Like with taking care of plants, it's like, you know, the precursor to having a pet. <laughs> like something a little more totally. dramatic to take care of. Uh, but it's such a nice ritual to go through, like on the, like the day that I water all the plants in the house, it does feel really sweet. And I like give them a little love, dust off their leaves. Uh, again, the kids are like, are you talking to that plant? I'm like, yeah, you know, I just want to make sure he's happy. I'm like, right in his little home. <laughs> That's nice that you talk to yours. I don't talk to mine. Yeah. But I think there's like research that if you do, like they do better. They're happier? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know that they can hear me, but I just like energetically giving them a little bit of love and then I feel yeah. like they can at least sense that. Like yeah. Living creatures can. Uh, so you are seeing patients virtually through the quarantine. I am. I um, have never wanted to see patients virtually really and it was really only something that I, I did for clients after we've already like established an in-person relationship but um yeah it seemed really important to to make myself available because this is hard times right now yeah. like it's confusing everything has changed so quickly there's so much uncertainty and it's really magnified anything that people were struggling with beforehand so um yeah so i started doing virtual therapy for existing and new clients once um, the stay at home order happened. And to be honest, like I'm shocked by how good it is. Um, the, the, the sessions do feel really useful and I have gotten to know people that I, I didn't know before going into this, you know, so I don't feel like it's been a roadblock in getting to know my clients well. Yeah. So, 
I think that's awesome. And, you know, you said it perfectly. Like, this is such a time when, like, just anxieties are running high. People are stressed out either about work or health or both. Um, and this is, like, the best time to actually connect with somebody and, like, find ways of dealing with all of those things and talking through everything. Yeah. Um, and this is, you know, like, the way of the future. We're just going <laughs> to connect. Yeah. Via exactly. Zoom, hopefully not only via Zoom or FaceTime or whatever in the future, but I think there's a lot of added benefit of this too, you know, like you no longer have to be in the same physical location as someone to be able to get like the best help for you. And I think that's really cool. Uh, especially with therapy, like it's hard to find a good therapist and like the thought that you you know, now could help people who are like outside of the Los Angeles area. Yeah. And I think really interesting. Not that like, I mean, I don't know if you, if that's appealing to you, but like for them, I'm saying to now I see people outside of the world. It's you know, it's, it's something that I have to remember myself and really like, I'm always present with my clients too, of like not letting the perfect be the enemy of the good. And like to be in person is ideal. That is, the better way I would prefer it. Um, but that doesn't mean that a whole bunch of good work can't be done this way. And being flexible, which is something that we're all needing to work on right now in coronavirus time is like really exercising our flexibility. Um, but being flexible means that so many more people can have access to therapy. You know, like, if yep. you don't have to drive to therapy and drive back, like that's half the time that okay. it takes, you know? So for a busy mom or a busy businesswoman or just anybody who has a lot on their plate, like that, that's the difference between being able to do it and not being able to do it. Totally. And you're removing what is, you know, a huge barrier for people, yeah. which is awesome. Uh, yeah, I love that. You know, and I agree, like, obviously, in my line of work, being in person, I think, is better. Um, but we've shifted. And, you know, we can do consults just like this. We can help people, like, reorganize any space in their home just by FaceTiming and being like, no, 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 that goes, that goes over there. <laughs> Switch that to the left. Really? Um, I've been wanting to, I mean, I, like, started the project of reorganizing my laundry room. Mm-hmm. So I want to open up the cabinets, Elsa, and I want it to look beautiful. Oh, yeah. And I want to have, like, but do you not want to know how much time I have spent looking for the perfect baskets that fit the size? Really? A stupid amount of time. And then I've just abandoned it. So I've, like, yeah. cleaned all of the things that didn't need to be in there. But, like, I haven't provided any new, like, structure for that, yeah. for, the, for the cabinetry to stay organized and clean. Do what, you know anybody? What's the drama with the baskets? What's, why? Um, is it like the material, the size, the shape? I want like black wire baskets. Mm -hmm. um, and I want them to look uniform. Okay. I don't know. The shelves are like 14 are inches deep. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I didn't think that. The thing to do is spend countless hours on the internet looking for baskets. It's a waste of my life. Like, why, what am I even doing? I know. I'm, thankfully, now I've had like enough experience with looking for specific products that when I find something that I love, I like keep them all in one place just in case I need to reference it later. Uh, but yeah, that's hard. I'm doing, I have the same, same drama in our mudroom. I wanted like very specific, like I want the baskets to fit perfectly in the little yeah. cubbies, uh, but the three cubbies are different sizes. <laughs> it's like so stupid. So either the baskets can be identical or and then there's like it's not filling the whole space right. or i can fill the space evenly but with different size baskets and that's the type like, a that's right there yeah that's like my ocd goes on <laughs> overdrive <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i remember what like part of my hang up with the baskets was is um they come in like bronze which looks black as i see it on amazon and then some of the sizes come in matte black and i'd really like matte black for all of them like i don't want to get all these baskets and in bronze and then they look brown yeah um and so and for sure they're gonna look bronze in person like great. yeah no good um matte black is so nice 
Like such a nice, such yeah, a nice Why do they only have some sizes in that black? I don't know. And who's buying things in bronze? Yeah. Who can deal with this in Corona times? Like, it's too much. It's too much to deal with. Just give me exactly what I need. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, well, thank you so much for chatting with me and being my guinea pig in this, whatever this situation is going to be called in the future. I love to be the guinea pig. I look forward to doing what you named it. And did you feel like we covered everything you wanted to talk about? I think so. Yeah. Um, unless you have anything that you wanted to add, I kind of just wanted to give people just something to think about as it relates to their home and mental health. Okay. I think, I think we're good. Yeah. I love your office behind you with your two little plants. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what's the best way for people to reach out to you if they have questions or just want to chat? Uh, you can find me on Instagram, which is my first and last name, J-A-I-M-I -I Brooks. Um, and you can direct message me or you can go through the link on my Instagram or through my website, which is also my name. Um, oh, and what? So easy. So easy. Yeah. And you can make um, a free consultation appointment. Okay. Look at yourself. Lovely. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, cool. Well, thank, thank you for you having me, Lisa. Yeah. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye.